That's what I'm talking about. This is what we've had for about three days now. Every afternoon, some real heavy storms. We're probably up to three and a half, maybe four inches in two days. Morning. What are we doing today, Doc? Today we're going to talk about, I think this is a really important situation that you need to think about when it comes to heavy rains or droughts. Understanding your soil, understanding infiltration rates, understand what you can and can't put down. Depending on the saturation of your soil, there are some big problems, and I'll give you a warning, so here we go. Hey guys, don't forget, a lot of this is covered in the lawn guides. Get the lawn guides, they're free. Over 2 million people have used them because we don't want your personal information. They're just up. There's three websites for each type of grass. Go there and use them. Also, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I usually don't ask that, but it does help, so give it a thumbs up. We have been, if you follow my channel, we have been in a drought situation for almost seven weeks. It has been horrible. And I told you in one of my last videos that everything was about to change, and boy, has it changed. I'm going to take you up and show you my rain gauge. I think we've had between five and six inches of rain over the past two to three days. And thank God, none of it's been super heavy, but you can understand when you look at some of the video I shot yesterday up by the chicken house in the garden, you can understand infiltration rates. Believe it or not, if you have a clay soil, your infiltration rate can easily be less than half of a tenth of an inch per hour. Got that? So half of a tenth <laughs> per hour infiltration rate. That's why at some point in time, if you have clay soils, the silt and silicate starts to lock up. It's a very tight soil and it's very slow to infiltrate and it gets saturated and that's where you can get that runoff. So we'll talk about what products you can put down and when you can put them down, a few different things. Here we go. Okay, so I'm about to hop in the UTV and I'm gonna take you up to the uh, farm area up here, the chicken area. Before I forget, I'm, I'm pretty bad at making sure that all the products I mentioned are linked. So in the description below, uh, I will have a link to one page. And on that page, on our website, I will try to make sure I link to all the products. If I forget to link to something, please remind me. And then also don't forget, we're still doing our giveaway which is up to $3,000, either a McLean Real Mower or a Toro Zero Turn. And all you have to do is be subscribed and be on our mailing list. There's a link to the mailing list over there. We do not send out marketing emails. I maybe send out two emails a year if there's something going on, like a sale or something. But other than that, it's just an automated system. And it sends you an email that says, this idiot has put out a video. And if you want to watch it, watch it. If not, go do whatever else you're doing. So stop rolling. <laughs> I didn't put it in park. It really is amazing. When you start to get these rain periods come in, what happens? Look at this. If you watch my video just three days ago, this was real patchy and dry looking. This Bermuda, which is common Bermuda out here, is just starting to explode. So this is that common Bermuda. Now this used to be woods. This was trash and woods. and We just scraped it with a skid steer. That's why I'm using common Bermuda because it's tougher. And it's got to grow over these big humps that are like tree stumps and it'll do that. That common Bermuda will do that. Um, but, and then I came out here and put down more seed, but man, I'll tell you what, it's just utterly amazing. Even over by the cabin over there where I have a lot of clover, I'm seeing this green haze. After three days, I mean, look at the skies. This is, this is what we're dealing with. We had a couple hours of sunshine yesterday, which is perfect for seeding. I've done the back. I've put down two types of Bermuda seed on the back. We're gonna do, we got so much going on, but I am holding off on any fertilization. I am holding off on any other products right now because I'm in that rain, rain, rain pattern. You, your soil gets saturated. Once it gets oversaturated and you get a real heavy rain, that's where you start to get that runoff. So here's my rule that I've talked about for years. You want to watch the fur for a fertilizer window. And what does that mean? The sun comes out for 24 to 48 hours, even though you're in that rain period, your soil starts to dry out. And I'm talking about maybe just, you know, half an inch that starts to dry out at the top. That's the point that you can fertilize. And here's what I would do. I would probably use something like a green shocker, which is an instant release granular something like a DGL, which is an all fast release fertilizer and do some spoon feeding at that point. 
I can't like here, I can't use a slow release here because what's going to happen is I get two hours of solid rain. That fertilizer is going to melt and melt and melt. My soil is going to be saturated. I'm going to get runoff that goes down to my pond and I'm going to get algae blooms down there. So I have to use a green shocker, but I have to pick my window. Dry soil, put it down. Now here's a tip. If you are using green shocker, right after you put it out, even though you got rain coming in that night, run your irrigation system. Why? Because that green shocker product actually turns into a liquid like that, and you'll start to get it in. So if that product gets in a 16th of an inch, as that rain starts to fall, it's going to carry it down into the soil. Once it gets saturated, it's locked in and you're done. It's perfect. So anyways, that's how I use it here. I want you to do two things right now. If you don't have any dirt booster or humichar in stock at your house, you need to order some right now. I have a feeling some of that stuff's going to go out of stock soon because this is the time of year, this July, August heat time where you want to be putting down and concentrating on your soil. And I'm getting ready to do another order. I've got humichar. I need to order some more dirt booster. Hopefully it doesn't run out of stock. So get that ordered and have it ready. Now remember, those two products contain no nutrients whatsoever. Just, they will improve your soil. The Dirt Booster has humichar, organic matter, and mycorrhizal fungi. That mycorrhizal fungi attaches to your roots and quadruples and quadruples the size of your root zone. That's why you use it in the summertime. You don't use mycorrhizal fungi supplements when it's cold because fungus colonies actually go down. Their activity, all microbes go down. So this is the time of year. But the same thing, I don't want to put that down when I have pouring rains, but I do want to put that down when my soil is moist. It's just like a compost pile. Compost piles, if they dry out, guess what? The microbe activity dies off. So it takes a little bit of moisture, it takes a little bit of oxygen, put that down and it's perfect. Okay, so I'm up by the chicken coop and if you remember, I dug in these drainage ditches and there's a good reason for it. Yesterday I came up here and I'm going to show you, put up some video. There's a huge water pool in here. Again, slow infiltration rates. You got this red hard clay soil and this was all a big pond of water. <sighs> Everything just smells different. It smells alive. I want to look and see where we are on the rain tube here. I'm in flip flops, by the way. <laughs> I was sitting there watching YouTube and this place is gonna get muddy. Where are we? Three, four, almost at four inches. So we're almost at four inches. Is that four or is that five inches? But I want to give you an example so you know I wasn't exaggerating. This whole property slopes all the way down and then it hits sort of a ridge here. This is a real bad pooling area. What I need to do is I need to come in here with probably an excavator. I need to cut some drain lines in here to get this water to drain over there, not down here. But we put in this sort of drain system here and I want to check and see without Hi girls What's what's working out wonderfully is their run is perfectly dry They're out here pecking around thunder rain And I want to see yep. I see pooling water in here. That's good. I Want to come down here. I definitely need to I definitely need to cut a drain line. I'm going to come in. I'm going to get an excavator or something. And I'm going to cut an I'm going to cut a drain line that goes over this way. I don't want it going down to the barn. Oh yeah, this is this is full of water. This is perfect. This is what I wanted to see. Can you see this water that's running? That water is running and it's running down here. So this is actually three feet deep here. Very happy right now. The only thing I'm not happy about is I'm not happy about this big mess here. I really need to come in here and cut a drain line over this way. My granddaughter and my wife were out shopping. Of course, I had them go buy tractor supply to pick up some chicken grit that I was running low on. And of course they came back with a whole bunch of chicken stuff. So to make them both happy, if you feed them, they will come. A rooster bucket, and then we got free range chickens. Watch your step. So now the granddaughter will be happy. If you feed them, they will come. Look at these guys. 
So I use a lot of natural sticks as far as like getting up here and, oops, someone found a bug. See that one running? That one found a bug and now they're all gonna chase it and fight for the bug. A lot of people say, aren't you worried about bugs in your, in your, uh, in your chicken run, chicken house? I'm like, dude, you don't understand chickens. If they find a bug, they will fight over it. Look at them, they're all chasing that one bird with a bug. Look at it, it's got the bug. Look at it, isn't that crazy? So he, the leader has got the bug in his mouth. Stop picking my leg hairs. I will turn you into Chick-fil-A. Stop picking my leg hairs. They think my leg hairs are some kind of bug or something. So I came up with a little invention. These uh, little watering cups have a removable, cleanable cup inside of it, but it's hard to get out, so. So here's a little trick. I ordered some ketchup bottles, and here's what I do. Clean. Clean. A little piece of something. Clean. Chickens are basically pigs. And then I just leave the water bottle in there. Here's a little interesting note. So I've got a big problem up in my fields and it's called Bermuda grass. Look at that. So I have finally found a product that I can spray on this. It will kill all the grasses, but it will not kill the broadleaf. That's crazy. So I just, I've been searching and searching and I finally found it. I'll do a video on that. But we talked about the super high potassium up here and the trouble it's caused us and why a lot of people say put heavy potassium down to relieve stress. Don't do it. Get a soil test done. But this is feldspar. And I put up a picture of this, but I just found this rock right over here. That's feldspar. It's almost a quartz-like crystal material. And that feldspar, as it degrades over time, which this area is a washout area, um, it releases a lot of potassium in here. And that's been our problem is real high potassium. So I don't have my regular nine millimeter with me today. I always have this little 22 in my, uh, in my cart and I'm walking back to a deep feeder back here with a camera. This actually has snake shot in it, but that's really all I need. But this is an amazing spot back here. So the redneck skyscraper is up there, feeder stations here. And we have a shooting lane that's almost 200 yards. We'll clear it up um, come the fall. But again, we don't take a lot of deer off this property. We may take, out of seeing thousands and thousands of deer, we may only see, we may only uh, take one or two. issue right now with water getting into them, and I think it's where the solar panel is connected. Test, full battery, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. That stuff hurts. Okay, so here we go again. This is the pattern I've got. It is 3.58, so it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Storm clouds are rolling in again. We had about three or four hours of sunshine. Got kind of hot, the temperature is dropping, these clouds are moving in and we're supposed to have thunderstorms possibly starting now all the way through about seven o'clock tonight. This is like an everyday occurrence and I can't put a fertilizer down until this lawn has a good 24 hours, 48 hours. You got to get that sunshine to dry that soil out a little bit, but be prepared. I'm just warning you, this is that time of year where stuff starts to run out. I don't know why inventory levels get crazy. Anyways, I'll, uh, I got about six more videos to crank out if I can. I'll talk to you later. Doc.